then it has a methyl group on the nitrogen. And this compound has been found in some other cacti, but this is the major alkaloid in this extremely potent northwestern Argentine cactus, the Terchechiae. And the compound has never been tried in man. It's totally unexplored clinically. The second most active, second most prevalent compound in that cactus is mescaline itself, which is probably the reason it's active. There's also in dimethyl mescaline known as tractoserine, it's not an active compound. Three uh, mono and uh, three dimethoxy uh, compounds, none of them known to be active. And there's a seventh alkaloid I've not yet uncovered the structure, I've not yet uncovered the structure of. But this compound is from a, from a Tractoceros, I say, a South American Tractoceros, that is not much explored and should be more and more exploration. It gives rise to the compound and methylmesmine that should be explored as a potential psychedelic, as a potential psychedelic, and it has never been. Uh, other attacks, when I worked with the some extent, not the Pachyceros, but the, uh, not the Tractoceros, but the Pachyceros genus, uh, is Pachyceros premii, which comes from Baja, California. A, con a, a cactus about 50, 60 feet tall. The whole story of how the active component of it was discovered is a, it's quite a different, different story and too long for the moment. But these are examples of cacti that are pharmacologically active and carry active components. The, uh, there's quite a bit of discussion I've heard about Salvia de Medorum, <coughs> the uh, active sage of the Mexican sage, uh, a case of a, of, a, of a plant that is very active, the active component of the uh, uh, Salvadoran A uh, is active in the 100, micro, 100 some micrograms level uh, and uh, extremely complex molecule. It's not an alkaloid, it's a, it's a terpene, a, 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 a sesquiterpene. A sesquiterpene, no, it's a diterpene, pardon it's a diterpene. It's not one that's going to be easy to synthesize. It has seven asymmetric centers, and you must observe all seven of these higher uh, positions to get the right compound. It has not been synthesized, it will not be for a while. But these are the plants that are now currently in the inventory of psychedelics. In the synthetics, it's where it has really gone very, very far up. <coughs> synthetics have really gotten out of hand very nicely. Uh, in the phenethylamine, in the phenethylamines, the bulk of the, the, the pilot compound from which synthetics have been made has been mescaline. I mentioned the TMA was known, uh, the Canadian work in my work back in the 50s. Uh, that led to a host of materials. For example, um, you can move the trimethoxy amphetamine, you can move the methoxy to five different positions. TMA, TMA2, I call it TMA6. TMA2, TMA6 are the compounds of the methoxy at 245 and 246 positions. Uh, both are much more potent than mescaline, about 10, 15 times more potent than mescaline. And the 245 is the one in which I really focus my attention because it's easily made. It is not natural, that particular compound. It's not in nature, but it's easily made. And once you have something easily made, of course, a mediocre chemist can really have a great time with it. And I enjoy it nice thoroughly, putting all kinds of other groups on the molecule. And all the things I developed on the, on the TMA2 would also apply the TMA6 in that area is totally unexplored, not totally, but largely unexplored. So here's an area that's going to explode into the future sometime in the next year or decade or century. Someone's going to say, hey, what about making the two, four, two or six things of all the two or fives you've known, and you're going to have a host of 100 new compounds that are biologically active, but they have not been made yet. In the two, in the, in the two four five, I uh, made a number of homologs of it, and I found the four position was the, was the functional position that gave spark and fire to the molecule. And so I put the ethoxy there, methoxy, being methoxy, propoxy, all kinds of derivatives, branch chains, all branches of compounds, the larger they got, the less potent the compounds were. But it showed me that this was the active site of, the, of this molecule. So the obvious thing is replacing the methoxy with something else. So I had this idea of, of putting on inflation methoxy a methyl group. A methyl group is a little bit smaller. It has the advantage that it's more compact. If this material, I felt, uh, it, has a, it has advantage, disadvantage is it cannot be metabolized off very easily, whereas a methoxy group can be taken off very easily. The methyl group cannot be. So I had this fantasy, if it is, goes to the same receptor site, it's an active compound, then it'll go into that place and be a very potent material. If it goes in as not an active compound and it goes into that receptor site and blocks the receptor site, 
then it would be a, not only an inactive compound, but if human psychopharmacological problems, schizophrenia, uh, mental disturbance, is due to some endogenous poison that goes to the sector site, this could be a therapy for that poisoning. It might be used in the treatment of mental illness. So it's either going to be an active psychedelic or it's going to be a potentially valid um, anecdotal treatment for a psychedelic or for a natural uh, altered state that is not one in Medicaid. So it made the compound I think I cannot lose. Either way, it's going to be uh, an interesting development. It turned out to be a very potent psychedelic. I made a deal uh, called DOM because I, this oxy, I took the oxygen away, put less than methyl on this oxymethyl. And the compound uh, was, I made that about 19, oh, probably 1965 or in, in the mid-60s. The next thing I knew, there was a compound on the street about uh, uh, six months later called SDP. And it turned out that was the compound. I had given a lecture at Johns Hopkins uh, a few months earlier, and someone clearly had picked up the molecule, the structure, how to make it, and made it, and made it, hate ashbury in the 1960s. Uh, had a great deal of this STP available. It was being sold as a as a as a uh, psychedelic drug, which it is. But the disadvantage is no one knew it. Potent, its potency knew the fact it was very slow onset and very long experience. And they made it in 20 milligram tablets, which is absurd because five milligrams is a very excellent, excellent dose. And people were taking tablets and made multiple tablets because they were told it's like LSD, and people were overdosing on them. But the material as STP, which is the name in the United States for an oil additive, was used at that time just as a trick. As it, originally, the STP, they said, stood for stop the police. Uh, then the police used it for too stupid to puke as their way of, of going after the, the drug. 